today, I believe. I'm going to be honest and say that I don't have any pre-plan for this. It's just a YouTube video. Truly, I don't want all my content to be the same. I don't want you guys to be watching me on TikTok, hearing me preach on TikTok, watching me on YouTube, hearing me preach on YouTube, then going on Instagram, hearing me preach on Instagram, then going on Twitter. No, I don't, I don't want that. Um, I want to be able to give you what you need without making it so repetitive. Sometimes I just want to have a conversation. And I think that that's what this is going to be, a very transparent one. All things are possible to them that believe. How long will you hide? How long will you run from the trees? Not run from the trees, but hide amongst the trees. I don't know if I'm silent this long. It must be something that heavy. That on top of my stomach kind of hurting. I must, uh, I did some crazy stuff this past, this past week. I was hiding amongst the trees and I'm talking about Genesis 3 again. I'm so I'm just stuck in Genesis three, and I God has so much for me in Genesis three. But it's because I've been hiding among the trees. Adam and Eve were hiding amongst the trees, hiding in the very thing that was killing them, the very thing that was separating them from God. They were hiding in. He said, "Adam, where are you?" He said, "Lord, I hid myself because I was naked." Matter of fact, when they noticed they were naked, they began to sew leaves together and put the leaves on their body. So now we have death. Covering death, hiding in death. While life is calling them, they're still hiding in death. And I think the most powerful part was how, even though they did come out of death and decided to take life over death, they still had to deal with the shame, having yet leaves on their body, indicating that they were somewhere and did do something they had no business. Excuse me. And so, I was waiting with my water jar. That's what I did. And so, anyways, um, furthermore, after they did come out, God gave them new garments to say, because you came out, despite what you were covered in, you knew coming out was going to expose your truth. I've got new garments for you. I'm on this study, that, and I don't even know, but the biggest thing people keep wanting me to talk about is Jesus and homosexuality. It's so clear. The potency of my ministry is I, I show people that Jesus loves everybody. And I have yet to talk about it, and I have yet to unpack it because I don't really love myself. And... So I don't think this is going to be teaching rather than it is just talking. And maybe something will be produced out of my transparency. I fell this weekend to the person that I don't like. I was drinking again and I hooked up with my sneaky links again. Yeah, I say it with an S, okay? <laughs> I've already prayed about it, but this ain't the judgment seat. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna come for me. I did. 
This is a very, 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 very interesting one for me. Sometimes I feel like I'm living a double life, you know? I remember when I was in seventh grade, it was this fight that I had got, I didn't get into the fight, but I kind of participated. My friend at the school got into this fight and it was a girl, she got into a fight with this other girl and she went and she beat the girl up or whatever. And I'm like, the only way for me to get suspended too, because at the time I was very insecure, I wasn't confident, that was my only best friend. So I wanted to, if my only friend like, that I was comfortable with, like I knew everybody, but it was this one friend I felt like I needed to have in order to be confident, that was my confidence. So if my confidence is gone, I don't want to be there. I'm like, the only way I'm gonna get suspended too is if I throw one hit. The girls on the ground, I went up to her and I, th I threw one hit, but it wasn't even no, like I'm really trying to hit you. It was more like, I'm just gonna touch you so I can get suspended. And I did. <laughs> and when my dad picked me up, we were in a car, he's like, you got something you wanna tell me? I'm like, no, because I really didn't. And I didn't, like, it's not like I knew what he was talking about. I didn't. I'm just sitting there. <laughs> Is there something you want to tell me? No, no there isn't. <laughs> no. Robin Lewis, if we get back to this house, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be pretty. Because you're asking me if I have something to tell you, you're going to beat me? So, eventually, it came unto me what it was he was talking about when he said, what it was he was talking about. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, no, there's not. He kept asking me questions, and he asked me, was my friend gay? She's a girl, but you know, she was. Um, and I was lying, I'm like, I don't know. Because, you know, I mean, that just really ain't my business. It's not my cup of tea, okay? I only can spill my tea. I can't spill nobody else's tea. So I'm like, no, uh, I don't know too much about that. I don't know nothing about that. And so it was like, um, <sighs> it was like, um, just this long ride because we stayed in the suburbs. He stayed in the hood. So I had to drive all the way from the suburbs where I stayed with my mom and my school was all the way to the hood and to the ghetto where no one could find me and save me. And so we pulled up. He backed in. He extra like that. He don't ever back in. But when he wants to be extra, when he got an issue or a problem, he wanted them to do extra stuff. So he pulled back in. Mm -hmm. He gonna say, Robin Lewis, do you know how traumatic this is? Like, how are you really coming for a child because they have nothing to tell you, but you're into... Uh, let, me, let me get to the story. Let me get to the story. Then we're going to get the background. Let me get the background. Then we're going to dive to the details. I'm sitting there. He's trying to cry. for like, all right, come on. I'm like, nigga, what you want me to do? I'm like, I'm gay. The cat's out the bag, okay? But it was never no cat in the bag. Because I did not have to, to tell him that I never was. No. I still like women. My attraction to men does not mean I don't like women. I'm not gay, okay? Why are you putting your truth on me? be different if I really was like completely settled in that like I literally I liked this girl at the school and I liked this boy at the school I was living a life it wasn't no thing it wasn't no big it wasn't no big issue it'd be different if I had something to tell you and you just finally got it out of me but I literally was like what is this are you questioning yourself and this is your deflection kind of find out I think that's what it was many years later um spiritually I found some, out some stuff but we'll see where this goes he sits there Robin Lewis, are you for real, man? Wow. I'm like, nigga, you the one that wanted me to say it. This is what you wanted. Now you had this surprise. 
I don't care how we go in the house and we sit here and talk to me about it. Witness, trying to say that I'm liking my friends and stuff. It just... <sighs> we go on from there. That became my life. Everything revolved around that. It was even a point when I got, like, so... The, um, I went over his house for the weekend. I saw my dad Monday, Wednesdays, every other weekends, or Tuesdays, Thursdays, every other weekends. I think at this time it had been set Mondays, Wednesdays, the Tuesdays and Thursdays is when I was a child. I think this was Monday, Wednesdays, and every other weekends. I was just trying to think, oh, how does that play into my life now? Maybe that's why I like Sundays so much. I love a Sunday because it was the day I got to go back home to my mom. Maybe that's why I like Sunday so much. Because I'm trying to think what days of the week, you know, get me. Just trying to think some stuff. But literally Sunday came and we went back to the parking lot. And not the parking lot, but we went, he went to take me back to my mom's. And I had to go to, we had to meet at the police station to do a peaceful exchange off. That was the court order. It had to be at a police station. How we got there, I don't remember. And so we went to the police station in the subs and we were doing the exchange. He was like, I got to talk to you. And mind you, they were not cool like that. He came up to the car. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Okay. All right, son. It's okay. And then it was just like weird. I'm sitting there. Oh, my gosh. I just think about, like, who does that to a kid? You got to make this big issue out of some who somebody, like, something you forced a child to say, first of all. Now you're going to make a big issue. So I felt like attacked like I had I like I, I don't know I feel like I don't know small I felt like my whole life was turned upside down and it wasn't even my truth I literally from that moment spent the rest of my life having to argue myself not gay these people are trying to put me in this box and put all of this stuff on me I can have a personality without being associated with what I like I'm a person like everybody else. So then it became me having to hide my personality because that automatically got associated with sexuality. When even if I do like who I like, why can't I just be me without comparison? Hmm. When guys are on their sports teams doing weird stuff, y'all don't be doing no extra stuff. Tyler Perry dressing up as Medea, but why in the black community, in the toxic part of the black community, is our personality in being falsely indicative of sexuality? They're very fully straight men who get called sassy and all this stuff and wonder why we, as where DL came from, wonder why people finding out about their husbands doing different stuff. You push them in that box because you try to make them feel wrong about being who they were. And you know, I'm just, we're going to go to the Bible soon. You know that. So just, just stick, stick with me. From the moment at that police station, we pulled off and I didn't want to talk. She tried to talk to me. Come to find out she was never mad. It was just how he had reacted that had me thinking. It was just, it's not what I wanted. I did not want to be exposed like that. I mean, yeah, I was, I had, like I said, I had nothing to tell them. So I'm going to move on. And I, I didn't want to talk to her. We're in the house and I went in my room. I didn't want to look at her, nothing. It's uncomfortable for me. Later, I found out she really didn't care because she, apparently she, she already had her own suspicions and knew it was never a big thing for her. He made it a big deal. But that was also a lie because she aided in trying to make me go down on a bunch of stuff too. Where am I going? I feel like my whole life I have had to be someone I'm not simply because I never wanted to be compared to a category of people. And I also then realized that despite how much I didn't want to, how much I am just me. I'm me. Not in, in no comparison, I'm just me. I don't want to be me because I don't want to be a part of that group. I, I don't want to be because I don't want to be a part of that group. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to be too um, eccentric so that I don't fit in here. I don't want to be too here that I don't fit in. I don't, 
I, even with the stuff I do preaching, I don't want to be so radical that it ain't no church within it. I don't want to be so churchy that it ain't no radical within it. Who am I? And I'm just me. And I'm tired of hiding. My therapy session on Friday was like, you're living a double life. They, they, they were like, do your, do your parents know about your sexuality? I'm like, yeah. They're like, do your godparents who I'm staying with, do they know? I'm like, I don't know, but it's not really a topic. That's why I said the toxic black community. Because why most people don't care. Who cares? You know? It's not one of those things you care about. Who sits and talks about who they like? Who gives a crap? So I was like, no, you know, we just, it was like, would you have that conversation with them? I'm like, why would it be relevant? I'm not hiding. If you know, you know. My mama tried to say when I got that coach bag, the big one, she was like, and they don't know that you like, I'm like, woman, why do you assume that just because I have a big old coach bag, Floyd Mayweather has big birthday bags. It's not an, an indication of anything. And what also made me feel this way was I was at my godbrother's basketball game. This woman had a Birkin. I love them and I want one. I love them. And I want one. Everywhere I go, I want a dark blue one. Okay? With silver hardware. I want one. Okay? Love a bag. And I said, I never carried my... You see the small coach and the big coach. I love me. And I realize people love me. No one judges me. And if they do, those are the people you just don't put yourself around. But I love me. Why am I going to keep on and pretend to be somebody I'm not? So then that became my whole life for me hiding my personality. My mom used to tell me, why are you acting like that? Oh, you so extra. Ugh. I'm like, I'd be like, child. She was talking about, y'all know how I be saying child. She'd be like, why are you saying child? We were on the phone with them, like, child, please, you just keep on. And then she was like, oh, now I'm child, 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 blah, 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 blah. Then everything, it was just all, the, that's why I don't talk to her now, okay? Because I'm moving into healthiness. I just, I changed my number on me, folks. <laughs> okay. See, this is the personality I be hiding. Because I don't ever want y'all to think. I never want to contradict my Christ. I'm very much something, but none of it contradicts itself. The fact that I fell only shows how much I need Jesus to keep me up. The fact that I, I, I me, mean, it shows Jesus, like my authenticity is, is doesn't contradict my Christ, it proves it. And so I'm like, I'm tired of hiding when I don't have to. I feel like if I'm gonna talk about Jesus, I gotta be truthful with y'all. The message I preach gets your fight back came from me falling into my thorn that's in my side and him getting me back together, waiting on me and saying, get it together me getting my fight back to keep on moving and not let that sin kill me. And I can't tell y'all that until I tell y'all this. And every homosexual person, every gay person, every confused person, every, and I don't want to necessarily say every homosexual, because I'm, I don't, I don't really like that actually, because when the Bible talks about homosexuals, as I'm diving into the study, uh, another study, because I came to a conclusion before, it's saying homosexual was really molester of young boys I go on to say Jesus could not have died for all sins and there'd be still be a sin he did not die for come on now let's challenge your theology here someone said how do you believe in Jesus being a gay man I said first of all who told you I was gay because I'm not second of all he died for all sins so let it have been a sin anyways he died for it they want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah that wasn't love it was lust it was rape hmm 
Maybe if there was a situation of two males loving each other authentically, not in relation to lust, which is a lot in the gay community, it's lust that people call love, then maybe the argument could be valid. But the book of John clearly says the disciple whom Jesus loved. The disciple whom Jesus loved. I was talking about this the other day and I said for if you're not ever have experienced being attracted to another man you are only seeing it from one perspective oh that's just his friend and I'm not here to say what the truth is I'm just gonna tell my story y'all can do what you want to do with it yet having been in this world dealing with this living it I come to find that maybe Jesus really did love John you don't have to have sex to love someone. Love and sex don't go together. Love is love. Do we have intercourse with Jesus? Let's just be real. No, we don't. Because you don't have to love, have sex with something you love. It. That's not it. I can love you deeper. The Bible even said that after he resurrected, John was able to identify and see because they had a different relationship. That was Jesus. We had a different type of love. That wasn't lust, though. It was love. Is loving someone a sin? Absolutely not, because Jesus is love. Holy Spirit, come. If I say anything that is not of you, then shut it down. Convict me where I stand. I don't want to hide anymore. You said, come out the trees. This is my attempt to stand with me as I do it. In Jesus' name, amen. So when I see people asking, I come to realize that God wants me to prove to everyone that who you love does not determine his love for you. You cannot step to me and say anything about me being condemned or going to hell. I would be like Paul and exercise my right to boast in the things of God. So I could talk about my understanding of the word that only the Holy Spirit can reveal. I can talk to you about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is shown in the tongues that I can speak. I could talk to you about my many prayer, powerful, powerful, my gift of prayer. I could talk to you about how many lives I pour into via the Holy Spirit, how I prophesy and how I rebuke demons. And I could talk to you about all those different things that prove God in my life. But I would rather talk to you about how he saved my and how he continues to do so. How I have this Scorpio fire, since Scorpios are known to be, you know, have a little sex thing. How I have this fire for it in me. And if not for him, it will consume me. I'd rather talk about my inadequacies. How I run towards things that aren't good for me. There's this hookup app. I download it purposely. There was a situation I was reading my word. I wanted to read the book of John again. I purposely stopped reading to download this app. I would be stuck in everything that my flesh wants, if not for him. And I can't say that I sought after him every time. What I can say is that he waited for me. What I can say is that he called me out of my trees. Adam, where are you? What I can say is when I jumped out of the highest building in my dad's house, he was at work and I was going to go with Sneaky Link. It was a mess. I was young at this time, younger. So I don't know why I didn't order an Uber. I cannot recall, I don't know. But I ended up having to call a taxi taxi, okay? I was 
So I bought a taxi and it was a lot. It's different than Uber because you can't get on, you know, the map and all that. Taxi pull up on the street. I'm looking out my window. I'm like, cut the lights off. Like, cut off the lights. Cut off the lights. They ain't cutting off no lights because we was in the hood. Like I said, man, they pull up. They loud. The squeaking is quiet. I go out. Some guys out. Well, I mean, I was, it was nobody home. I was home alone because he worked in the nights and I stayed home by myself. So I left. Got in a taxi. Went all the way to Sneaky Link's house. It didn't go far because, anywho, <laughs> didn't happen. We never did it. And then left, got back in the car, went back to the house, got out of the car, went in the house, went upstairs, got out of bed. And <laughs> I was chilling. I was like, you know what? It wasn't what I wanted it to be, but I got my lick back for sure because it was, it was, uh, 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 uh. that ain't the point. I want to go there right now. <laughs> Like some good came out of it anyway. So I was chilling. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Laying in the bed scrolling, minding my business. Next thing you know, I get a front door open. Immediately. I knew it in my spirit. And I didn't even understand my spirit at the time, but I knew it in my spirit. I said, oh Lord, this is it. He about to, oh, I knew it. Part of me didn't think that though. Part of me just thought, you know, he just randomly came home and I was like, oh, thank you. I made it in perfectly. Heard him come in and put his keys down. I went out there and next thing I know, I hear him coming up the stairs. Let's see. Because it was only one room. The whole upstairs was my room. So if he coming up the stairs, he ain't coming up to go to his room. He coming up to come to me. I'm laying there. Lights off like I'm asleep. <laughs> I could, I, I used to fake it because he, he, I told you he was crazy, clearly to me, you know, he, if y'all didn't know, he was crazy. So I had to learn how to fake sleep so that when he would come up and see that I was, because if, when, if he came up and saw that I was up, he would make me come downstairs and start making him breakfast and like I was his slave or something. It was very weird. We'll unpack that later. And so I would just pretend to be asleep. So I had to perfect my snore. So, you know, I was doing my little snore. I was in my the hills or whatever. He don't flick the light on. Come over and mind you, I'm just under the cover. I'm hiding my face. I can't see nothing. I can't open my eyes. That'll, that'll kill the act. I'm in full theater mode. He snatches the cover up. Wake up. <laughs> he was like, I know you're not asleep. Or I know you're not asleep. Or where you been? Something he said. And so I was laying there. I'm like, I think I'm going to open my eyes and like, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like some, I don't know what he said. We're gonna fast forward to the good part. Eventually he went to my phone. He saw a little boy because we were texting on iMessage. He saw a little boy and shoved me on the bed, literally. I'm on the bed like this, see? And I literally could not breathe. Like, I'm not joking. This man was trying to kill me. And I literally, I looked at his eye like, I can't breathe. Shout out to George Flo. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Dream Rose. Four, four, two, six, three. I know my baby was deep. I got a chance to chance to chance again. I ain't done. I knew I, I could break you though. <sighs> then eventually he let go. He used to give me his gun. Um, when he would go to work in case someone came in the house so I could use it. And because I was upstairs by myself, we were in the hood. I mean, people, we were, we knew people on the block, but like, you know, times was changing. People, they robbing old ladies. So he would give me his gun. A little bit after that, he like, he stopped and he was looking at me like he just wanted to kill me. He turned to walk away. He looked down at his gun. He picked up his gun. And he was staring at it. Then he looked at me like he wanted to kill me. I'm like, is this nigga going to shoot me? He goes, and he walks downstairs, and he, he he's manipulative. You the type to make you not know what's next. I'm just laying in the bed. Then he, I think he took my phone, something to go into my phone. Then he found out that, so I'm gonna have to give y'all the whole backstory. This is gonna be a long video, just strap up. So I actually was living in Atlanta prior to me going back with him. I was living with my mom. Me and her had moved to Atlanta after she had got a divorce from my stepdad. So it was me, her, and my little brother living in Atlanta. And this was like right when I had got there. Me and her 
weren't getting along, I don't think, but it's because she was going through a divorce and she didn't know how to handle her own issues and all she could do was deflect and not be a good parent. She, 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 like, she was, I mean, that's what it was. Broken parenting from her mom. She never learned how to be a good parent, but she was only duplicating what it was that she experienced. Then she's going through a divorce on top of not knowing how to even take care of herself. And it was just a bunch of BS. Going on. And so my, I had got sick and I had to go to the hospital. And she was like, um, she was like, what's she saying? Oh, she, and then I'm there. I think next thing I know, my dad popped up in the hospital room. Mind you, I wasn't talking to the man. I think I stopped talking to him at like 14. So her doing that was very much op behavior because you know I'm not talking to this man. You know I'm not dealing with this man. He walks in the door randomly. It's like the devil just came in. I'm like, really? And of course I was mad at her because now we're going through something. And instead of you being a mother and, and taking accountability and, and coming to your senses, I literally wrote her a letter, sat down and read it with my cousin present who has a right, a sane mind. My mom said, and I was like, you've never apologized to me for anything. The stuff, the, the times she would beat me and she had to go to jail for it. The times she would belittle me and make me do all these crazy things. The times she talked about me, the times she betrayed me and chose her husband over me. Her husband, because that ain't my dad. That we and her were together, but she allowed her marriage. She literally said to me, you think I would choose you over my husband? Duh, ho. You had me. I was here first. Why would you not choose your kid? You don't want to lay down and had a kid in the first place. And yeah, this is me. And I want to show y'all who I really am. This Jesus who changes my life. That's the point of this. Yeah, that hoe did that nasty stuff. You're going to choose your nigga over your child. Who? What, what woman do that? A broken ass woman. One who don't know. Yes, Lord. Jesus, help me. <sighs> okay. So when I tell y'all to get away from these traumatic parents, it's because I'm walking it. I'm not perfect. Jesus said, if you're not willing to forsake mother and father, if you're not willing to walk away with them and walk with me, you can't be my disciple. He said, when your mother and father forsake you, I'll take care of you. So I let them go. I tell y'all to let it go and let y'all hold it, Jesus. Nevertheless, this hoe sat in my face and said, what you want, an apology? This was before that. That's why I ended up going with, oh, y'all don't know. I didn't tell y'all. So anyways, then this hoe gonna call my dad. He comes to the hospital. And we, I'm like blown away. Apparently after we go out, out and we, I don't know, I think we went to Cheesecake Factory. He brought my godmother. It was really this girl that he liked. And she was just this, it, it was just a weird, crazy situation because it, it was just a facade to cover up for the fact. So my grandma used to tell me, she would be like, yeah, your dad's in love with this woman. Your dad's in love with this woman. And I'm like, um, no, I don't think they're actually in love. But as I've grown up and seen, this was the next door neighbor, mind you. So, okay, the next door neighbor was apparently my godmother that he made my godmother. My mom never said that that was. And she would be like, no, they just like each other. So it was weird. But, you know, I didn't catch on to this. Till one day, more recently than not recently, about two years ago, maybe three, I finally saw with mature eyes and I ended up cussing her out. I'll tell you that story later. So anyways, um, he brought her. We went to the Cheesecake Factory. We're at the Cheesecake Factory. And he, somewhere, I, I, we, we just talking. It was a BS conversation. We get in the car and we leaving. He's talking about come back with him. And because I'm uncomfortable around him, and I, I that's why I left him alone, I, I, he's manipulative and I don't know how to say no. I get forced into doing stuff I don't want to do. He makes me go back to Michigan with him from Atlanta. And so I go back. He's like, I, I think I have was, I go back the next day. He purposely kept me away from my mom so that he could manipulate me even more. And so um, we leave the hotel he was staying at, go back to the house. And at that point, I walk in the door. I didn't say anything to my mom. I'm like, why would you call the one man who has manipulated me my whole life? Why would you call my dad? Of all people, you could have called the devil first. But you called my dad, at least I know. At least if you called the devil, I know I got more power than the devil. You called my dad, I don't believe I have more power than him. I feel small. 
So you call her. I walk in the house. I'm getting my stuff. I don't say nothing to her. I walk out the door. I tell her to go to hell. I straight up said it. I said, go to hell. And I walked up and I left. So that's how I got back to Michigan. And so I, I went because of what happened with my dad. But I also said okay to it because I had a little boo thing in Michigan. This was my first boyfriend. I hear I'm trying to, you know, they can find out this truth when they watch the video. But I don't want to hear them in the recording process. I don't want them hearing the recording process. So I would you call it? This was my first boyfriend in high school. We met at this church party. And my then best friend was who got, uh, you know, we got each other, who, who, who got us the numbers or whatever. And then we were able to move on. And so I had left and went to Atlanta. But I was like, okay, I can go back and I can be with you. I'm not the long distance type, okay? I want to be with you every day. I want to see you. I want to look you in your eyes and know what you've been doing, who you've been talking to, where you've been going. And so went back. Um, and so when he was going through my phone, he found out and it broke his ego, I guess, that I didn't really come back for you. Obviously, if I stopped talking to you all these years, why would I randomly want to be with you? And he was like, um, he got mad about it. He came up there. He's like, really, for real? So you lied? I don't know what happened. I can't remember. It was a very traumatic situation. Nevertheless, I thought that he was going to kill me. Just to keep this story going. I don't want to get caught up. I thought he was going to kill me. So, literally, um... I think I had to go to school the next day and I didn't have a phone. And I think I had told, his name was Antonio, that I was leaving. And so I don't think he believed me or whatever because he was mad when I left because it was random. And so I went back home and I thought he was gonna, I think I had to go to school that day because it was early in the morning. So I think I went to sleep for a minute, woke up and went to school. So then I think when I got out of school and went back, that's when I thought he was gonna kill me. I don't know, or maybe I thought about leaving a week ago before this even happened, and I think that's what it was, if I remember correctly. I had already planned on leaving because my dad was a psycho, and I think I was going to ask my mom if I could come back. I think I might have texted her already, and it was a done deal. I was going back. And so then when this happened, it was like this was already what was supposed to be taking place. And so anyway, um, okay, so I didn't go to school that day. Woke up, went to sleep, woke up, went to sleep. Cause I just was stuck in my bed. I had to. St I didn't. I didn't know I was stuck. I was just safe. I didn't. I, I couldn't do nothing. And so then I thought he was gonna kill me. Fast forward to the story so we can get to the point. I go and I'm cutting. I'm like, I gotta get out. I gotta get out of here. I think he said he was gonna cook dinner or something. I'm like, you. You just a liar at this point. I don't know what's happening. I think I'm gonna get killed. So I move my bed. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So I'm plotting like, okay, do I run downstairs from my room, run, unlock the front door, run out the front door? I'm like, no, what if I don't unlock the front door fast enough? I can't get out. Do you see how crazy this is? And this was my father. This is crazy. Anyway, I'm like, okay, I can't risk running to the front door. I'm like, okay, what if I grab something? I'm like, I can't risk anything. I don't know what's downstairs. I haven't been down there. I think I might have went down there to use the bathroom just to try to scope it out, but I didn't trust myself. We had just got a new front door, so I'm trying to think of how the lock works. I'm like, no, because if I turn the lock the wrong way, thinking I'm unlocking it and lock it, I was overthinking to the max. Like, I didn't have anything to waste. I could not. My dad was no joke. I'm talking about the same man that would punch me just because I was talking soft or something like that. I remember one day, I think I might have been washing dishes, and I think he said, why are you talking soft? And then punched me, knocking me to the ground type stuff. I'm like, yeah. I got to get out of here. So I go up to the window. I, I'm like, all I can do is jump out the window. I move my bed enough for me to get behind it. I slide the window up. I think he coming. So I put it down, got back in the bed. Then I'm like, Robin, you don't have no time to waste. You're going to have to go. If you're going to go, you're going to go. I lifted it up. I was looking out the window. I believe I had cut it. And then closed it like the screen the screen was flapping i believe i cut it and then i closed it back and then i was standing to the side that's when i was like robin if you gonna go you gonna go jesus help me i don't even think i called on his name when i was first doing it i might have i don't remember that part
And my parents got the nerve to say, ooh, anything negative to me. When I felt like I had, I don't care, give a dang what I did. It don't matter. Sneaking out the house to go see a sneaky link is worth you choking me to death. To the point that I feel like I have to jump off the high, out the highest window in the house. Again, my bedroom was the tip, 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 tip of the house. It was at the top. I cut it. I'm hanging. I'm like, I just got to go. I couldn't sit there thinking about it. I went. I hopped. Hopped out by a shuttle. Mm. I got on the, the, the side thing, the ledge, and I just pushed off. And as I'm going down... I'm gonna just post this video raw. I feel like I've been rambling. I feel like I've been all over the place, but y'all, this is my story. I jumped, I jumped, I jumped, I jumped, I jumped. And I feel like I was jumping out of that and into God's arms. said I got you and so anyways I have some tissue in here as I'm jumping I see a white Malibu that look like my aunt's car so I had my eyes stuck on that and I think God is so intentional because I think had I been looking down I would have broke my neck or something I don't know what could have happened but because this fall was it was a hard fall and so I just kept staring and then I hit the ground unexpectedly. Oh, by Shantana, my see ya. Da 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 ba. Mm, Jesus. And I was laying there. Boom. It was a loud boom when I hit the ground, just laying there like this. I don't know how my arms were, but I was laying. I was on the ground flat. All I could do was look up and I saw the two houses and I couldn't move my body. I was paralyzed. I could not move my body. I tried to get up. I could not get up. Could not get up. I was paralyzed, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm laying there looking up, paralyzed, and all I start doing is praying. <laughs> That's all I can do. I said, Jesus, help me, please. Please help me. Please help me get up. Jesus, please help me. Every time I say, Jesus, please help me, he shows up. Every time, every time. It hasn't been a moment. I remember when my mom and my stepdad were beating me. He would hold me down and she would come and beat me. Crazy ass people. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> I went on my knees and I prayed. <laughs> they had left the room for a minute. I don't know if they went to some secret abusive parents meeting in their in their you know, on solitude, like, we gonna go in and we gonna get up like this. Probably not, but they left out the room for a minute, then come back and was gonna finish. I'm praying. Lord, please save me. Please save me. And when they came back, it was different. This is when I was a lot younger, but I was praying, Lord, help me get up. Next thing I know, uh, I got up. I don't, I literally... Next thing I know, I just started getting up. Oh, hallelujah. And I was limping, but I was up. I came out of the trees, but I still got the leaves on me. I was limping, but I was up. I'm going to try to give y'all a little demo. Freaking focus. I was limping, but I was up. I'm up here limping, limping, limping. I go to the neighbor's house, who was my godmother, but she was really the opposite. So I go thinking she gonna save me from this crazy man finding out that he crazy. She wouldn't open the door for me, being the op that she was. I'm literally at her door ringing the doorbell. Help, 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 help. I'm knocking, I'm knocking. This was the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know it at the time. The 
Holy Spirit said, go. Literally, the Holy Spirit said, go. Oh, he said, go. Literally, I think I was turning around. Thank you, Jesus. I think I turned and he was coming from, I think, I, I think as soon as it was go, and I might have turned around. And as soon as I turned, he came. And I opened, and I think the game might have already been open. And as soon as I turned, he came around the corner and I darted. Mind you, I was just paralyzed on the ground, limping to the door. Now I'm darting. I'll show you how the Holy Spirit will show up. And I was fine from that point on. I lowkey think I have a lower back issue now because I never got my back checked out. Like my, I never got it like checked out or nothing like that. So I think I have lowkey have a lower back issue that needs to be looked at. But I would you call it? Child, I darted, took off. He was trying to catch me. I smoked. Talk about how God will show up and give you speed right when you need it. I smoked him, ran the corner. I'm like, I already know he's gonna go get in the car and try to find me. My grandma lived a couple blocks down. We was in the hood, so my grandma lived a couple blocks down in Detroit. This was e course. I'm like, I can run to Detroit to my grandma's. He'll probably find me. I'm like, no, I turn left. It's a church right here. I'm like, I'm going to the church. So the lady put on out. I'm knocking on her door. Mind you, we in the hood, and she an old lady, so she don't know nothing about me. I'm knocking on the door. Help, help. My dad's trying to get me. He's trying to kill me or something. I said, I didn't exaggerate the story. I just told the truth, though. I'm like, he's after me. I'm trying to escape. She's like, mm -mm -mm. I'm like, girl, in the name of Jesus, I command you, tell me where to go. And so anyway, she like, go into the church, go into the church. I went to the church. He didn't know where I had went, but I went into the church. We called my grandma and come to find out it was her church and I ain't know it. <laughs> ain't it crazy how God works? It was a setup. The pastors were there and I was safe. Um, they called my grandmother. She came up to the church and they were all crazy. Like, you didn't know this was her church? I'm like, no, I just came for help. God works in mysterious ways, so... Next thing you know, I think it was the next day or so, I was on a flight to Atlanta, honey. I was out of Detroit. Okay, talk about us a mission. That was some Liam Nelson type stuff. You know, my mama ain't all bad. You know, she has her bad moments, but she has her good ones. She came in and saved the day. Okay, I was on that plane. And uh, I was out of Detroit. You wouldn't find me for nothing. Went back with her. And um, I don't know, that's not the purpose of this story, but... It wasn't the best because I ended up leaving at 17, which was not too long, maybe a year or so after this, because it was still chaotic, you know, she was crazy. And so, go back. I say all of this to say, because I don't know why I started, why I started telling this story. God is clearly in my life, I remember now. That was it right there. I could take it all the way that. And my blood is clean. I talked about that in one of my podcasts. I told y'all, that little Scorpio demon, that little sex demon that comes knocking on my door. Before I had an ounce of a grip, there's no way I should not be sick. I'm gonna be real. I have not always used condom. I do not take prep. There's no way. Yeah, my blood has been clean every time. That and the paralyzed thing, I have enough to say God is in my life, period, point blank, period. And so I say, <sighs> when I see people commenting, saying that, Oh, I'm attracted to men and I just want to know for myself. I'm, just, I'm battling with myself. I come to find that me hiding my truth does not show Jesus' love for real. The Bible goes on to say. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
I'll even read the the prior, 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing nor your good nor your bad nor your sin nor your lust nor your smoking nor your drinking, nor your addiction, nor your your love, nor your who you like, nor your sexuality can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I come to find that you guys need to see someone standing in that authenticity. I, and it's been shown because the black church has a lot of undercover people that don't tell their truth but they are not authentic, authentic in their relationship with Jesus. They have not made the decision to not walk by the flesh, but walk by the spirit. So when you look at where is the sin at, the sin is that you put something else before God. Paul says, I discipline myself that I do not disqual I, I strike a blow to my body. I strike a blow to my body and make him my slave. That I, I preach to you, I don't disqualify myself. Because how can I try to preach you out of lust if I'm still in it? So there's no good representation that says I can walk in loving someone and not fall to the lust of the situation because you're all hiding in the dark. And when you're hiding in the dark, that's where the demons play in the dark. Salvation is in the light. Freedom is in the light. Coming out of the trees, though wearing your leaves, that's the light, the redemption. Now you've got new garments, but you got to come out of the dark. No one wants to come out of the dark because they want to do dirt in the dark. They want to live out their demonic life in the dark. And I'm done living in the dark. Number one, it's a lie for me to get on here every day and not talk about my authenticity and let any soul that encounters me to walk away thinking that God does not love them because I never told them my truth so that they could see how God loves them. There's no good example. I'll be that example. I keep telling y'all to be authentic. I understand that greatness only comes with authenticity. There's no way that I have this vision. Ascension. Y'all can just see the cross. Y'all don't need to see the detail. Yeah, you know where this will end. If you're a real one, if you know the ascension, then y'all it's right here too. I drew the cross, the ascension cross, the church that God gave me, the vision. That's what he's giving me to steward. I said, there's no way that he's going to give me this if there's no glory in it. But what makes me special? All these churches, everyone is doing something authentic. People are attracted to them for a reason. People are attracted to me. And this already started in my beginning. My, my, my ministry attracts this generation and impacts this generation because it lets them know that their inadequacy does not stop God from loving them, but only proves why he loves them even the more. So every time I fail to be fully authentic, I fail to stand in who God has called me to be, which is a vessel which is a pillar and a beacon of him and not myself. I cannot protect myself and protect this image of myself and create this falsity of myself, even if I don't like every truth about myself and hide and, and try to make it about Robin. No, God chose me because of what I go through. That in my authenticity, it can be shown that there is if there is an, that it is possible to walk with God, to walk with Jesus and have his spirit. There is therefore not no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For it is only by the spirit, if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh. I am not perfect. Uh, but by the spirit, I'm able to stand upright. Why is my Bible? Well, I don't know if I can show y'all it. I'm trying not to let my pens fall out. Why are my pages 
under why is every scripture underlined because i was trying to figure out lord i can't break this lust you gotta break it for me i'm furthermore attracted to something that i think you don't like then i have lust and i keep doing what you don't want me to do how do i break it i can't seem to break these addictions how do i break the very thing that is desirable to my flesh i hate it in my spirit but my flesh likes it how do i get out of it and not kill myself and end up in hell by your spirit i know the book because it saves my life so I can't get on here and act perfect because no, I know this because he saved my life. I know Jesus because he saved my life. And so I've hid for so long. And it makes me wonder, how do I show up hiding my personality? Because I don't want to be looked at a certain way. But I can't change who I am. I want a wife. I want kids. As I've grown, I understand the, the genetic differences between male and women. Which is when you look at what's best for you, what's beneficial for you, what brings life. How, how can two men bring life? This is not contradictive because I, my ex was a man. My previous ex was a man. I've, so it's not contradictive to my own life. I'm just saying this is true. Men are heated with sex. Women are arguably not. That's how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to balance out the men so men don't run rampant doing crazy stuff. Balance. When you don't have that, you just have two men. It's two crazy people running amok. The breakthrough is when one is aligned with Jesus. Jesus is supposed to be the head. Men, he's the, Jesus is the head of men. Men is the head of women. But when you have two men who don't have Jesus as a head, just two devils trying to run the world, you got devil on devil on devil. And Jesus just sitting up here like, what y'all doing? The breakthrough comes when you say, I'm going to still be connected to God. And if I be connected to God, I'm not going to fall to lust. Then I can understand that anything I partake in is love because I'm connected. Everything that I fall into lust wise, he said no. Once I got connected, I didn't have to fall to stuff. I have to make better decisions. I didn't have to follow this path. I got chose to. Bad decision. Hmm. I'm connected. He said, no. The problem is people aren't connected. So to say that God doesn't like people for who they love, that's not how it works. It's when you allow that to triumph over him, which is the problem in the community. Pride, yeah, all of that stuff is lustful. It's pride in the name. It's a sin. You're, it's glorifying sex. Having sex with people, 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 people. that's what it is. That's, you're going to hell, yeah. If it was about telling the world that to love another person, even if they look like you, it's okay, I mean, that might be a little bit different. There would probably be some pastors attached to it to say how Jesus loves everyone, but y'all are promoting sex. So every time someone gets, like I was watching the Grammys, oh, they've done so much for the LGBTQ community, blah, 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 blah. Baby, ain't, people aren't opening up, like, it's mainstream, not well, whatever, but it took so long because y'all just was trying to have sex. Y'all don't really care about really loving each other. Y'all just want to have sex. That's it. And you didn't want to have to hide about it. I'm one of them too. Except I don't like it. And as I've grown, I've come to realize if I take away the lust aspect, I can love a man and not want to be with that man sexually. Go to one zip with zip. Nothing. I'm not here to say what's right or wrong. It's not an argument. Lust is wrong. But to love another man, I'm not going to say that's wrong. It's about is it real love or is it lust disguised as love? And for me personally, I found out that, it, that it's lust. Even in my ex is disguised as love both of them i only wanted to stay for the sex both of them especially the last one chocolate cake listen you can give me some i don't like chocolate cake in the world but if you give me some chocolate cake oh my gosh <laughs> <sighs> we're gonna be authentic we're gonna have to be authentic give me a dark skin honey and so that was what kept me. And so I, I allowed myself to stay in something God told me to leave simply for sex. Lust. I put something before God. 
when you start doing that, that's when you get out of it. And so, what was the point of this video? I'm just not coming out the story. Because I want every single person that looks at me to not see a facade, but to see someone who authentically knows Jesus. And nothing about me stops me. I also want you to know that it's possible to break out of lust. Because I know that's a big thing. I feel like this, my, I feel like Ascension is called to Atlanta. The act for Ascension is Ascension Atlanta. Because I was in Atlanta when I got it. And I've always been drawn to Atlanta. Like, that's where I'm supposed to do some impacting. And I was going to change it to Ascension. And I even reported this page whose name is Ascension. If y'all want to go report it, um, the, the page name is Ascension. And they got nothing but cats on the page. I tried to DM them, but they didn't want to give me back. I want that name. Um, because I was just going to do Ascension. But I'm like, Ascension Atlanta, I really feel like that's where it's going to be. Because when I was living there and the experience that I had there with the people there, a lot of them need Jesus but feel like they can't go to them because of what they're caught in and they don't know how to set themselves free. I battled with that and it was only Jesus that set me free and keeps me free and covers me. And so, um, yeah. So I said, you know, I had a conversation with this someone the other day, like I said, you have to evaluate why you love people and that determines what the sin is. Is it really love or is it lust? I want someone who can balance me out. And I don't want somebody like me. And genetically, no. I need someone. I don't know. How old they, they say, I mean, I just need someone that's not me genetically. And so, oftentimes, gay relationships don't work because genetically, they're just not compatible. You keep on looking for this person to give you something your soul is craving, but they're not incapable of giving you because God pulled one man out of man that that might add to man and give man everything he needs. It only got messed up when woman made a crazy decision, but it didn't have to because Adam as the man should have told the woman no. Didn't God say no? But he fell to what the woman said. So now women can't trust their men today. Because this very same man that's supposed to be leading me can't even lead his own sexual desires. Why would I listen to you? So, I think I'm done here. But just about who you love, that ain't the deal, Bookie. You can love. Just make sure that God's in the love. I literally, when I entered my last relationship, I brought God into it. And I think I told y'all this in another video. I was praying every day, blah, blah, blah. It got to a point when I was drinking so much because we were going through stuff. And I, to, and I got away from it. And I recognized in my last relationship, when I put something before God, he will knock it down. Which I'm glad about because don't let anything, Lord, get higher than you in my life to the point that I have to lose you. No, you knock it out my life and you keep your spot, please. And he did it. And I did the same thing in this last one. And he did it. And I say that as long as you keep God in it, you'll know what's for you and what's not. It's up to you to listen to it. And I knew it wasn't for me. And so my sin became not who I loved, but who I wasn't showing love to, where I was absent, how I was standing in someone God didn't call me to be, being somewhere he didn't call me to be at. That was the sin, was neglecting him. Neglecting him is not just when I don't go to church, it's neglecting his word. Obeying him isn't just going to church, it isn't just praising him and worshiping him. Obeying him is listening to his word when he says, Abraham, go, go to a place that I will show you and sacrifice your son. Abraham's sin would have been him not believing God. Do you believe me when I say it's not for you? Do you believe me when I say go somewhere else? Do, I, do you believe? And so, honey, I mean, I like gospel music. I love gospel music. I'm a bard. I like Nicki Minaj, but I'm not so much of a part of anymore, only because she be talking about sex in her songs a lot. And I don't like songs about Jesus and songs about getting money. I don't like songs about sex. Um, but I definitely like her flow. So I'm, I'm low-key bar, low-key bar. They hive all day. As a matter of fact, I can prove it to you right now. Shout out to the queen. Shout out to the queen. I changed my phone number. I could not put my phone number into any thingies that, that send you verification codes. And I couldn't get in line for the tickets. So I changed my whole number. Just to get these tickets. Shout out. Breaking records. 
highest Grammy, no, not me, QB. Highest Grammy wins of all time. I was mad that they gave, uh, what's his name? Harry Styles, uh, Grammy over Beyonce. But you know what? We already know the T on the Grammys. That's why Nikki not there. Okay, so. Oh, Jesus, excuse me. Thank you, though. That was right. And so, um, they I right, boo. But I'm also real about my Jesus, real about my word, and I don't sugarcoat, and I don't play with it. I'm transparent with y'all to know where I fell because I don't desire to be one of those pastors who are showing you one pretty face, then behind the scenes doing crazy stuff. No, I'm letting y'all know about my crazy stuff so y'all can finally see where I'm standing in it and I've been walking in freedom for 30 years. Y'all know I'm not going to be one of them who never got out of it. Love leadeth to repentance. Who you are when Jesus finds you and picks you and gets you is not the person you should be when you've been walking with him for a long time. Everyone he says, he said, go and sin no more. We have grace because we make mistakes, but ultimately we are being perfected. We are being changed. We are being bettered. Paul says in Philippians 3, I count myself not to have apprehended or having yet been perfected. I know it. But forgetting those things which are behind me and pressing forward to that, to the to what is ahead of me. I'm focusing on the upper call and God and Christ Jesus. I know it now. Hold on, bro. I'm going to go to the Bible to get you verbatim. Um, Philippians 3 verse 12. Not that I have already attained it or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay a hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I don't count myself to have been punished, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, verse 15, therefore, let us as many as are mature having this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you, verse 16, is the power nevertheless. To the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. What you've already learned and experienced, walk in that understanding. Love leads to repentance. Grace, because you'll make mistakes, but you know this ain't no good. Don't go back to that time. I had to tell Jesus, Lord, I didn't have to do this. I chose to. And I'm sorry that I chose something over you. Grace says, Robin, I know. And it's okay. Let's keep on going. Now I can operate here, knowing this is not good for me, being mature, being disciplined to say no. I might feel like doing this, but I don't have to. That's why I've been able to get out of it. Because I know how to feel emotions that are in the flesh and be disciplined not to make the decision. So then when we get to the point of living on the degree which we have attained and we live beneath it, we have sinned. And yeah, there's grace, but how, how many times are you going to sin that grace might abound? When God is saying, babe, I've taught you this. You, you've experienced this. You've learned this. I've graced you. How, how, how much longer? And I'm not going to be one of those pastors. I would not ever preach change and not change myself. I would not ever preach that you have to have a relationship with God and obey the voice of God and be a person who doesn't. I would not be a pastor that you talk about behind his back like, oh, I heard he was doing this and heard he was doing that. No, man. I'm telling you now what I deal with so that you can see that as I stand and say every word that I say, I walk in it. Not by my mind, not by my power, but by his spirit. And that's why he chose me. You are loved. And I think I'm done. <clears throat> I also felt like I needed to not be myself, like in personality, because I'm a wife. And I don't want to, like, every time I, when I first moved to Dallas, I was going out, okay? I was going out, and, and I, I was looking good. I had my, I, this one I had hair, although I look good, bald, don't come for me. I had hair, I had my waves on, you know what I'm saying? I just, I had, I was, you know, loaded up with the bag. <laughs> I just was like, ow, I used to throw my, I was chilling, living my life, you know, doing what I do. And I was like, why every time I go out? I can't, I can't. Oh, I, now granted, I went to Punch Bowl Social. That was my spot. And me and this girl and her friend left. And me and the girl was making out in the backseat. Mind you, okay, I got the sauce. But I'm like, I don't want to be me and not attract my wife or whatever. I'm like, babe, I'll find my wife if I'm just me. Because personality does not determine sexuality. 
teeth. Okay. Me personally, off of what I've experienced dating, the guys I dated, I don't want one. We don't get along. Lustfully, yes. Love, no. I love them as men love men without sex. It's just normal. You can love them without that, but I don't want that for myself. So I also, my godfather said to me today, because I was crying last night when all this conviction hit me, and <clears throat> I had to come to worship and a whole lot of stuff because I was like heavy off of the mistakes I was making and the devil was holding a lot of shame over me and I had to really get with God and, and talk to him. And so I went and I just had cried with my godmother. I was I hugged her like a little side hug and I just hugged her for a minute and I was silent crying and then I got up. She didn't know I was crying and then she was like, you okay? And I was like, mm-hmm. And I was wiping the tears out, but she's like, I'm gonna come and check on you in a minute. And so I had laid out and I was in worship or whatever. So I don't know if she had came in or not, but I was out of it. I was on the floor. And so then uh, my godfather came and talked to me like what was wrong. And I told him, I'm like, yeah, I was being a version of me that has expired. I was living beneath who God called me to be. I went back and I fell. And then he said the same thing that I knew and that the same thing that my therapist said on Friday. You just have to make a decision. You can't pick up Jesus when you're going to pick him up and put him back down. And that's what I was doing. I said, OK, yeah, no, I'm going to go do this. I put Jesus down. When Jesus said, no, just keep chasing after me. Why are you going to put that down? That ain't, that, that ain't love. It's different if y'all were married. You don't spend time with me. Okay, go here. But why don't you go to something that I've called you from and run away from me? I got something for you to get out this book, but you would rather run away to what I've called you from. That means you don't want me. You want this. And if I leave you here, it's going to kill you. If I leave you here, it's going to destroy you. If I leave you here, you'll never get to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You'll never get to tap into your destiny. So do you want this or do you want that? I said, Lord, I want you. Said, I know you do. That's why I chose you. Now keep going. That's why when people say I feel like I messed up and I be trying not to be authentic on the live and tell y'all, oh yeah, I messed up last week, but it's okay. No. God knows your heart. Man look at the man look at the man look at on the outer appearance. God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outside. God looks at the inside. He knows your heart. You're his child because of what's in you, not what's outside of you. He understands. I know you made that mistake. You ain't even want to make the mistake. You knew you were going to feel like this when you did it. You, you knew it. Now, now you're feeling shameful when you, you never had to do it in the first place. Nevertheless, I love you. I was in this word and I didn't believe. Man, when I tell you, you have to get to a point of just believing what he says to you in this book. I was done. I thought I was doomed. God said, Robin, nothing can separate you from my love. And I had to stood, stand in it. Then the message today, my bishop confirmed it. It's okay. Like, Standing on his word is okay. The message of today, and then I'm done. He says something about how Jesus was in this place, the city. The word was literally a representation of chaos, idolatry, and a bunch of other bad stuff. The woman had like six different men that she had slept with, and a whole bunch of stuff was going on with her too. Jesus was sitting on the well waiting for the woman. He didn't just walk up to the woman, and, and when she was there, she, he was waiting for her. Her and her mess had a moment with God that was coming. She didn't know about it. It didn't take her to do anything right. God was just waiting on her. So she went to the well. He was sitting on the well. He talked about how he's a well on a well. And he tells her, if you drink from this, you'll keep thirsting. But if you drink from the water that I have, you'll never thirst again. Meaning you have two waters before you. Which water are you going to choose? He went on to say that Jesus was waiting in a chaotic place because he's attracted to chaos that needs him. My thorn was given unto me that we might have a reason to be this close. If I was so amazing and had nothing, how would I know him so well? I know him because we got to have a meeting all throughout the day. I know him because if he don't show up throughout the day, Robin going to show up. I know him because if I don't know him, I don't know me. I only know this darkness, but I don't know the light. He is my light. I want him to be that light for every single person that I encounter. I realize I hide how much I love him with my even my God family. I'm like, I be wanting to sing. All, I be singing all day. I be wanting to walk around just saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Not even like a churchy way. That's just me. That's in my spirit. I just love Jesus. I just want to be like, thank you, Jesus. We were watching the Grammys and it was the performance with Quavo and Chandler Moore and Naomi Rain. And afterward, I just really want to start praying. They had brought the spirit up and I was just sensing it. And I just want to start praying. But I started praying in my mind. I hide a lot of myself. And I feel like it stops me from really 
being the light that I am, and I don't want to do that anymore. I'm stepping into this full-time influencer stuff, child. And I'm really about to do... Okay, so Ascension, we gonna, we're making a Discord. Um, I, I, I don't know how Discord works for real, but it's going to be an Ascension Discord. That's where we'll all be able to communicate and do stuff like that, Bible study. I said a Zoom link, but apparently I might be able to do it on Discord. So Discord is going to be where it's at. Um, I don't know if I'll have it in the bio for this. I'm trying to figure out if I want to start posting on the Ascension page and like let go of the personal or how I want to balance it out. I don't know, but because I'm walking, I'm like being coming attention all about all of this stuff. Finally, finally, I see that if I show up and present myself and be authentic, I can actually do this thing for real. And so I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to do all of this for real for real. So I just can't be um, fake doing it. I gotta be real. Um, and that's the potency of my ministry. You have to be disruptive. If you do, you, you, you can't be somebody else. I love my bishop, T.D. Jakes, but I can't be him. I love the Potter's house, but I can't make another Potter's house. I gotta be Robin. I'm over here trying to think, how do I want to run my services? However, I want to run the services. I ain't gotta follow or do nothing like nobody. And I'm not going to be a liar to y'all. I'm gonna be honest. My honesty though, is development for me too because I've hit from my own self at times. And once I'm learning to love myself, that's how I can fully love people. I'm learning to love all of me. I love the moments where I'm like, child. I love the moments when I'm like, yeah. I love the moments when I'm like, child. I don't really know too much about that. I like the moments when I'm singing and when I'm laughing. I love the moments even when I don't have it all together and I'm just like, Lord, what do I do? I'm learning to love every ounce of myself and understand that it never contradicts because I have Jesus. None of my pieces are disconnected from Jesus. In my bad, in my, my super sinful days, when I was like deep, 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 I would literally go into praise and worship in between like a slinky link. Child, I used to run them hoes, okay? One out, one, oh, y'all, he, he, it was, it's for him, I'll tell you, I'll tell you for him. Even in the bad, he was there. Even in the bad. So when someone asks me, why do you believe in Jesus, child? What would I be if I didn't? I would rather bring all of my filth, all of my dirt, all of my inadequacy into the presence of God. And him have the, and him have the option to reject me, though he said he never would. I would rather go in with the possibility that he might in my own mind than for me to never try. I'm going to keep believing him. Regardless, if I've got to ignore every bad word spoken and get into this word for myself, that's the problem. Y'all keep wanting to chase after everybody. You need to get in this word for yourself. And let him tell you who you are. You got to bring out the dirt. You can't leave the dirt behind and just bring you. That's not authentic. Those who worship God, he's seeking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit for sure, but are you being truthful with God? Paul goes on to say that what I hate to do is what I do, that what I want to do is what I don't, Lord. Oh, wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death. I find that it's sin at work in me. I had to stop saying, Lord, yeah, there's an ounce of sin at work in me, but I had to be truthful and say, Lord, you know what? I actually wanted to do this thing in my flesh. I wanted it. So the flesh is sinful and everything in it. So it's still sin in me. It's not me and my righteousness and my spirit and my holiness. But I acknowledge the fact that there is something in this flesh, Lord, that wants to do these things. And as much as I want to walk with you, there's something contradictory that wants to walk away. Not that I want to leave you behind, but ultimately I want to walk into something that ain't good for me. I need you. I need you. So God loves everybody, child. I'm that example. This long video. Just don't know what's going to come out of it. But I'm posting. Y'all all unfollow me. Y'all all unsubscribe. I don't care. At least I can move forward saying I poured out myself. And if I did it now, I can walk in it forever. Okay. Because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. God has been saying so clear. I mean, as y'all can see, I've been talking about it. Be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentic, be authentic, be authentic. 
I told you our power comes from authenticity. You're not being authentic, child. You ain't got no power. You ain't got power. Because I'm authentic. I will say I didn't know that you can get a Grammy for a book until Viola Davis won it. Viola Davis won it. And I think I've really been overthinking writing this book, child, because when I be listen I listened to some of her audiobook, I was like, this sounds just like you know, like I'm over really overthinking it. So um I am definitely gonna get a Grammy for my book. Um I'm speaking that into existence and I firmly believe that it's already done. In the name of Jesus, I believe you for it. I'm getting a Grammy for my book. So I put that on my wall now, a Grammy Award, and of course I put Queen B up there, duh. Um no no more hiding among the trees was up there. Body, soul, spirit, influence. Spirit, body, soul. You have to pick which one influences. If you pour only into the body, so shall the body reap. When I was sitting and I decided to turn from my Bible and into the flesh, my mind and my soul was influenced by the flesh. But when you're saved, you're saved. Let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. It wasn't so much that it could manipulate my mind and change who I was, but it was influencing it to something different because I was away from my strength. But when you pour into the spirit and not into the flesh, you have strength in your spirit and in your mind. So now you're being filled. My weakness, my, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. If you have no weakness, how will we know how strong he actually is? The vision of ascension. A picture of the ascension logo. I'm actually, I thought about getting a tattoo. Um, like just some Jesus stuff. But um, I'm like, no, I don't know why y'all sit up there allowing them to put a needle to your skin for real. But I actually might get the essential logo on me somewhere because um, it's a cross, obviously. And um, I have Buy Black Global Incorporated, my actual incorporation name and my LLC name. I have both of those um, real, real, real. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a CEO oh, business owner. Okay. I mean, I'm not kidding. I really do have it. Anyway, so um, I have something that says I can do all things through Christ. Oh, I have something that says I need glasses, y'all. Yeah. I have something that says a leader leads God's people, not systems. I was taking this. I was watching. I was taking this leadership class, and it said leaders lead people, not systems. And as I've been in the corporate corporate space. And as I've been, I guess, the corporate space and other jobs space, because I had worked at Amazon at one point also, but as I was in, but I guess that might be corporate, as I was in the corporate space, anyways, I realized I don't want to be over systems. I left my job with State Farm. I left my job at Mercedes Benz. Um, I, I, I mean, all of them, because I was running systems. I do not want to run systems. I'm a leader of people. I want to impact people. If the job ain't got people attached to it, I'm not doing it. I'm not about to sit up here and manage no computer, no computer system. And answering customer claims and filing information ain't it either. I want to help people. So um, leader leads people, not systems. To my leaders out there, God may be calling you to lead people and not systems. Whoever that's for, take it. If you made it this far, okay? Um, I have my revenue goal. Um, my book sales goal, I want to impact a million lives. So that's a million copies of the book. I want to impact a million lives. It is going to happen. I'm going to impact a million lives. This was not something random. God gave me this, um, many years ago. I just didn't, you know, time and time. Um, what else I got up there? I have a bunch of companies under the Buy Black Global title. And so I have a bunch, of, I have all of the company names do, 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 do there. And that's it. I'm not the thing with five though. I can talk about now. Gay people want all these rights and fight amongst themselves like we're <laughs> like all oh, amen. You know, all that. Why are you mad? Because one person is less masculine than another. Oh, you don't want that because that, 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 that. See, I can't joke with y'all yet because I was going to say. When Sam Smith did his performance, now I ain't gonna say that. When Sam Smith did his performance, um, I was too, he did not hit my spirit right immediately. Nothing about him hits my spirit right. And I I was gonna say no shade, but nothing about him hits my spirit right, nevertheless. But he got up there. As soon as he started performing the song, my spirit just went no, because I don't listen to the song. 
And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But the performance is in the devil. And I said, all right, I'm like, y'all gonna keep on doing that stuff till y'all burn in hell. Listen, y'all better get right with God and stop judging people. Especially who battle the same stuff that you, that you do. Stop judging people. Love people. Just because a person has melanin personality doesn't mean they like a certain thing. Just because they like a certain thing doesn't mean they're not loved by God. In fact, you'll be condemned for judging because that's not a fruit of the spirit than someone who just loves all people like Jesus. I'm done, I promise. I was in a lift the other day and the lift was like, ugh. Like, I'd be like, why do they have these old cars on lift? Mind you, I did get the lowest lift. So I was like, Robin, that makes sense that you got this type of car. Don't complain when you're on this level. I said, I was done, so I ain't gonna unpack that. You get what you pay for. I was like, okay, it's a little, uh. But I'm like, let me not be judgy because I have a nice taste. Understand that I made this decision, but let me start loving everyone and treating everyone the same and not looking down on people. I ended up impacting this man's day. He said, oh, I'm his first ride. And when my, his first ride is smiles and good, he knows he's gonna have a good day. Had I been like, my nose frowned up because it was at first and I'm in this old car and all that. I'm like, that's not how God does people. God loves everyone. I went to North Park Mall and on my video, people was outing where I was at. I was like, y'all some ops or whatever, trying to tell people where I am. I was in North Park Mall and there was a homeless man. He had walked by me once and I think I was in Dillard's or Macy's, one of them. And I was walking out and I smelled this putrid smell. I was like, oh, like almost throw up. And I looked back and I just saw this man walking. And then I didn't see him again until like later, like hours later, hours later, hours later. And I went and I sat by, um, I, I was standing, charging my phone and a lady was sitting there. He came and he sat down. Of course he stunk. And I was like, instead of frowning up, Robin, why don't you be who God called you to be? Jesus loves everybody. Am I only going to love people who had their life together? That ain't Jesus, how, how Jesus works. Jesus showed up for broke people. Jesus showed up for stinky people. Jesus showed up for sinners. He showed up for people out of their mind, people who didn't have it together. Showed it up for people, I think, what was it? He was hurting himself with the rocks, the demon-possessed man. He shows up for the to, for the worst things. Me? I said, Robin, how did Jesus show up for you? So you think you too good to show up for other people when he's in you now? Oh, okay. So I'm like, um, do you believe in Jesus? He was like, yeah. We had a great combo. I prayed for him. I said, I won't go talk about this. But what's my point? I don't know. I we here now, but I was never gonna tell nobody about this. We had a good time. I prayed for him. Like, is there anything that you need? I gave my information, sir. I'm gonna put this out here. I firmly believe that I'm going to one day see him at Ascension. I firmly believe it. I gave him my information. I believe that I'm going to be able to see how God changed his life because when I spoke to him, I believe it was necessary. Because it was not of me, because I would have frowned up and I would have walked away because he stunk, sir. Look, he already knows this. He stunk like crazy. But he had a right mind. It was clear he had got away from God and he was upset with God because he was in that situation. Oftentimes we get frustrated with God. We're like, Lord, how can you be God when I'm in this situation? Not understanding that all things work for good. I told him, sir, I was homeless 1.2. All things work for good. I got to see God in a different way. Because I was homeless, God has given you an opportunity to have a relationship with him that is rare because that only comes with suffering. Jesus is only Jesus by how he suffered. Jesus is only the Messiah by how he suffered. I only have this connection by how I suffered, by my insecurities, by my lack, by my sin. You have these opportunities in your lack to have a better relationship with God. And either you're going to grasp it and run to him or refuse it because you feel like he owes you something he doesn't. Yet, if you grasp a hold of him, he'll give you more than you ever could have imagined. And I firmly believe that I'm going to see that man at Ascension and see how God has changed his life. I decree it, I declare it, and I fully believe it that I'm going to see how God has changed his life because that's how good God is. And so, um, I think that's it for me today, child. Oh, and I have one more thing. I have this Africa Reserve um, that I talk about in my video called Get Your Fight Back. I'm going to post it on here. Um... I want I want to do something with that reserve. I want to build I want to build the Bible at Cobalt headquarters there. Um, I definitely want to do that. I wanted the headquarters to be in in South Africa. It's in South Africa because um, Bible at Global is a tech company, and I want it to be all black people in tech coming together in 
we're building this company. Um, it's cloud computing, retail, luxury retail, and a whole bunch of stuff. We'll unpack that later. Um, and so I want to build the headquarters. There is how many acres? 40, 40, almost 42,000 acres. Um, and it's like a reserve right now. It's like a zoo or not a zoo. I mean, it's Africa. They ain't no zoo zoo, but it's just a reserve. And they're like, oh, these animals live here. These animals live there. These animals live here. And it's like a whole map that I sent it. Um, and I'm like, I want to build a headquarters that's environmentally friendly or something. I that's the right word. That's economically friendly. That's whatever the right word is so that it doesn't disturb the wildlife. But, you know, it's there. And it invites people there. Not random people, because why are you coming to my corporate headquarters? It's so random. But the people that work there, Africans who love the animals and who can value it, that we can see. I think it's by water, too. I don't know, though, because I'm, I'm looking at the picture, and it looks like it's water. I think it's water. I want y'all to be able to look out and see the water and see this, and then there's space to do, build all the technology stuff that's environmentally friendly. And so that's up there. You've got to see it. To, so you believe it every day as a man thinketh in his heart so is he I, I said I was done and I wasn't going to promise y'all because I didn't know but I'm about to wrap for up in your heart you've got to be coming on the inside just watch my video get your fight back because I say all of this you got to be coming on the inside before you attain it it doesn't become yours when, when you do all of this it becomes yours once you become it on the inside it, be, it doesn't become yours when you get it it becomes yours when you do it on the inside the bible says write the vision and make it clear I have as y'all can maybe see on the bed this is a binder with notebook paper. Fully filled, five-star notebook. Fully filled, five-star notebook. 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 Fully filled, five-star notebook. Fully filled, that notebook was fully filled back there. I have literally... Um, notebooks on notebooks on notebooks on notebooks on notebooks on notebooks, on notebooks. and I'm in Dallas and Michigan. I still have notebooks on notebooks on notebooks. I've written the vision so clear. I just didn't believe the vision God gave me. Now I'm believing it. If you got to make yourself a vision board to see it every day, do it. Every time I walk in here, this is a mirror. This is all on a mirror. I don't know why I'm not telling you see. This is a mirror. Every time I walk in here, I don't look, I don't need to see the mirror. No, I can see the mirror in the bathroom because I don't need to see who I am right now. I need to see who I'm becoming. So every day that I walk in here, I look at that board and remind myself of who I'm becoming. So when I look and I see ascension, I see honesty, I see authenticity, I see spirit, and I see truth. And I say, Robin, these people need you to be real, not fake. And baby, you'll never know who's really for you if you're always showing up fake. So. Now it's time to become. So I have to be. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May you never forget the mercies and the grace that lies in his fullness. The, his mercies are new every day. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. His love has no end. Even if we make our bed down in hell there, he'll find us. He loves us unending. There's nothing you can do to separate yourself from it. There's nothing you can do to cancel it. There's nothing that you can do to, to be taken away from it. No one can come and grab you up out of it. It just is. He loves you. The question is, do you believe it? Because if you have bold enough faith to believe that he loves you, I bet you he'll show you how much it is, how, how true it actually is. But he wants you to believe it first. He'll show you if you just believe. Stop thinking he don't love you. I want you to be bold enough to say, God, yeah, I done messed up and I did all these dirty things, but I believe you still love me. Forgive me for every sin and watch how he shows up in your life. Now on that note, I say peace. Paul, I, I hate that. I used to do that, I think, at the end of my old videos. I'm not going back to that clicking. Peace out, y'all.